Hey everyone, Sam here. Thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are in the world. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to paint autumn trees and give you some tips on mixing some of those autumn colors. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And just before we start, I'd like to quickly tell you about Portfolio Box and then we'll get straight into the video. So if you're an artist or creative and you're looking to make your own website, then check out portfoliobox.net. It's an online website builder where you can create your own beautiful website to showcase your work to the highest standards. There's loads of different styles and templates for you to choose from. It's really easy to use. You don't need to code, it just works through a drop and drag. You can start building your website right away and then when you want it to go live, you just choose the plan that you wish to purchase. And right now, Portfolio Box are offering a 50% discount on any of their plans for the first year simply by typing in the discount code SAMERP50 and I've put the link and the discount code in the description below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's roll the tape. This painting is inspired by an area in southern New Zealand called Arrowtown, which has been historically planted with lots of European deciduous trees. This whole area looks stunning in autumn, which, oddly enough, is in the months of March, April and May. And having grown up in England myself, I'm still trying to get my head around the seasons being in reverse. I'm painting on a 10 inch by 12 inch linen panel it's linen that's mounted to Baltic birch and these are great for plain air painting and studio work and I love painting on these. They're made by a company in the USA at canvaspanels.com. I've toned it with a wash of burnt sienna which I allowed to dry before I started painting on it and this just helps warm up the painting and gives the painting an overall traditional feel. I begin sketching out my composition with Burnt Sienna mixed with Liquin Original which is the medium I'm using. As I'm using oil paints this helps to improve the flow of the paint but it's also got the added advantage that it speeds up the drying time so this is very useful if you want to get paintings done quickly. Now there's quite a lot going on in this painting so just for this video I'm just going to mainly focus on the trees. But before I start applying some colour, I'll just quickly go over the colours I'm using in this painting, which include titanium white, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, but you could also use yellow ochre as well, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, chronacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, cobalt teal, and phthalo green. And I'm mostly using a range of bristle flat brushes filbert brushes, rounds and dagger brushes. Before I start applying some colour to the painting, the first thing I think about is values, and value is how light or dark a subject is. Now I consider values to be more important than the colours that you're using because getting your values right is what's going to determine whether your painting reads well or not. So the thing about painting yellow trees is yellow is a light value colour and we can see this if we switch our reference photo to black and white then you can see how light in value those willows and poplar trees are. Now the background here is a much darker value and also the foreground is in shadow so that's going to help make those trees stand out. So I start the painting by marking in the cloud shadows and this is a mix of ultramarine blue burnt sienna and titanium white. And then the next darkest values in the painting are those shadows on the hill there. And again, I've used the same colors, but with less titanium white. I make the value a little darker still and paint the silty sand areas of the riverbank. The darkest values in this painting are some of these plants that are in the foreground because they're already in shadow and there's lots of occlusion shadows in there. Marking in the shadows first sets the tonal dynamic for the painting and it's just going to make it much easier to start adding in those lighter values and getting the saturation of the colour correct. I then go back to the sky and I start painting in some cloud highlights using a mix of titanium white and a little burnt sienna. And then I allow those highlights to mix in with the shadow areas to create some of those half tones you get in the clouds. 
I can then fill in the negative spaces around the clouds with the sky and that's a mix of ultramarine blue with a little cobalt teal and titanium white. Now I'm using number five flat brushes here just so that I can cover ground more quickly and create a more painterly effect. The next thing I do is I start painting some of the areas in light on the background hill and I'm using the same colours I used in the shadows and the cloud shadows but with more titanium white and burnt sienna so these colours are more dominant in the mix. Now on this background hill there's quite a lot going on there. We've got conifer trees and then we've got a whole mix of deciduous trees that are displaying yellow and crimson foliage. So not only has this got to be harmonious but it needs to sit back in the landscape so I need to desaturate the colours a little bit. Paintings are more harmonious when they contain common colours so I'm conscious to try and carry these colours throughout my painting and this is what's going to make it read better. So the dominant colours I'm using for these conifer trees is ultramarine blue and yellow oxide and then I'm using titanium white to make the value lighter. But I'm also using these colours for the sycamores, poplars and oaks that are in the distance that are displaying yellow foliage. I use a little bit of cadmium yellow in the mix but also quinacridone magenta as when this is combined with blue it's going to make a violet which is opposite to yellow on the colour wheel so this will knock that colour back. However I'm only using a very small amount of these colours. Now as I said earlier there's a lot going on in the background but for this video I'm just going to mainly focus on the trees. So I'm working on the mid-ground trees and the first thing I'm going to block in are the tree shadows. Now because yellow is a light value colour those tree shadows are going to be a lighter value colour as well than say if it was a conifer tree or if the tree still had its green leaves on it. If you look closely at some of these shadow colours you'll very often find that they're not a so much of a dark yellow but a greenish brown. So in this case what I've done here is I've mixed yellow oxide with ultramarine blue which to start with would make a green but then I mix in some quinacridone magenta. The red and the quinacridone magenta being opposite to green on the colour wheel is going to desaturate that colour so it's not looking so green. I also make the yellow oxide the more dominant colour in the mix. So once I've done this I mark in those tree shadows and now I'm ready to start blocking in the areas of the tree canopies that are in the full sunlight. Now most of the trees in this painting are willows and poplar trees and their foliage is a very similar colour. The willows are perhaps more of a lemon yellow in the foliage. Now here I start with a mix of yellow oxide, some cadmium yellow and I mix in some titanium white. The titanium white and the yellow oxide is going to help to desaturate that colour anyway but I also mix in some quinacridone magenta. There's still some areas of the tree canopies that are a little bit green so I just mix in a small amount of cobalt teal as well just to add a few subtle green hues into the tree canopies. Now cadmium yellow is quite a high chroma colour and chroma is another word for saturation so you will find that when you start painting these tree canopies that they'll leap out at you a little bit. This is where we also need to think about colour harmony and the relationships of the surrounding colours to these trees. Now when you're painting yellow autumn trees and you feel that your colour is too saturated then think about what is opposite to yellow on the colour wheel. Well it's violet. And we can desaturate a colour by mixing in its colour opposite. So I find that mixing in a little bit of quinacridone magenta which is a bluish red colour that this helps to knock back the yellow especially if a little bit of ultramarine blue is added although this colour is not always needed. You could also use alizarin crimson instead of quinacridone magenta as alizarin crimson is actually a violet. As I paint this willow tree on the right side of the painting I'm using the same colours that I used for the mid-ground trees although I've added in a little bit more cadmium yellow and a tiny bit more titanium white. Now as I work down the tree canopy I've introduced some more cobalt teal into this mix as some of these leaves were still green as leaf senescence still hadn't fully occurred in the lower part of the tree. 
As I work on the water in the foreground, I keep in mind that those still areas are reflecting the tree's foliage. So I can use my autumn tree mix for this area of the water. I block in the rest of the painting by marking in the shadow areas in the water in the foreground and this is mostly reflecting the other plants and the lower section of this willow tree so I've created a dark greenish brown mix here with yellow oxide, ultramarine blue and some burnt sienna. For the faster flowing areas of the water and the ripples I've used a mix of ultramarine blue and titanium white as it's mostly reflecting the sky. Now once the painting's blocked in, I leave it to dry for a few days and then I can start adding detail to it. Once the painting's dry, I then start with the furthest zone away in the painting and that's the sky and clouds and I start adding some more detail to them. I'm also using smaller brushes, mainly number three filbert brushes. And then the same for when I come to work on the trees and foliage on the hill in the background. For this I'm mostly using a combination of number two flat brushes and number three filbert brushes. I don't want the background hill to be too detailed either because it's gonna start becoming confusing to the eye and I don't want it to spoil the composition. So now I'm going to work on these willow trees in the midground, and I'm going to start building up the form and definition within the tree canopies. I want to create some of that feathery looking foliage that's so characteristic of willow trees. And the colours I'm using here is a mix of yellow oxide, cadmium yellow and titanium white. And then I also mix in a small amount of ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta. And these combined are going to make violet and of course violet being opposite to yellow on the colour wheel is going to help to desaturate the colour a little bit. However, I'm using a very small amount of these colours. The yellow oxide and cadmium yellow are going to be the dominant colours in this mix. I'm applying the paint with a number three filbert brush and using that rounded end to layer on the paint that's going to communicate clumps of leaves. Now I've made sure that the value of this colour is lighter than the previous layer as this is going to help to build up the three dimensional form within the tree's canopy. I use a similar colour mix for the willow tree in the foreground and I'm using a combination of quarter inch bristle dagger brushes and number two flat brushes to start painting in the suggestion of that feathery looking foliage, making it almost look like it's floating in the canopy. I'm still using relatively broad brush marks, but these brush marks are going to be getting finer as I work through the painting. Now once I've marked in these highlights, I can then start building up the form of the tree by restating some of these tree shadows. Once I'd worked on these trees, I then spent time working on the foreground areas of this painting, adding more detail, and then I allowed the painting to dry once again so I could start adding much finer detail to the trees and foreground of the painting. Now once those trees had dried, I'd mixed up another batch of yellows again using the same mix I was using before, but there's more titanium white in the mix to make the color lighter in value. I can readjust the saturation by adding in some more cadmium yellow. And then what I've done here is that I'm applying the paint with a quarter inch bristle dagger brush and I'm loading the end of those bristles with paint and just dabbing it on which helps to communicate leaves shimmering in the full sunlight. The mid-ground trees are almost complete so the next thing to do is work on this willow tree in the foreground but before I can start adding some finer detail to the tree's crown I need to paint some of those sky holes and this is going to add more definition to the tree's crown. So here I'm using a number one round brush and creating some gaps within the tree's canopy using my cloud and sky mix. Following this it was back to adding some more foliage and detail to the tree's canopy. I've been mostly using quarter inch dagger brushes and number zero bristle round brushes to start communicating the suggestion of individual leaves. So we're building up layers here which is going to add more depth to the tree's canopy. 
Here I paint the suggestion of a network of stems and branches within the tree, and this is a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna which creates a near black when combined. Now I'm just using this as a base as I'm going to be adding some highlight areas and reflected light that's going to add some lighter tones to these stems and branches. When it came to adding the final detail to these trees I'd let the painting dry once more and I used an old number two bristle flat brush in order to paint the suggestion of a few highlights within the tree's crown. Paint had gotten caught up in the ferrule so it caused the bristles to splay out but absolutely perfect for creating random marks within the trees. I've also been saving my lightest values until the end of the painting. So again it's the same colours that I was using before but I've used a lot more titanium white in my mix and I'm just applying it sparingly. We don't want to go too crazy with the highlights here. I applied the same brush techniques to the large willow tree in the foreground as well. I then finish up painting the tree canopy of the willow tree in the foreground by using a bristle dagger brush to add a few highlights and then a number zero synthetic round brush to paint the suggestion of some individual leaves. And these synthetic round brushes are great for painting fine detail as the brush hairs hold their shape really well. I then paint a few highlights on the main stems and branches of this tree and this is a mix of burnt sienna with some yellow oxide, titanium white and a little ultramarine blue. I finish up the painting by just adding a few fine details to the water in the foreground and the plants at the side of the riverbank. But other than that I decided that the painting was complete. Now if you'd like to have a go at painting this yourself then check out the lesson notes that accompany this video which I've published on my website blog. I've put the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did be sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Also please leave me a comment in the comments section below. Now if you'd like to learn more about painting landscapes then check out the painting resources I have on my website at samulerp.com. I've lots of free written painting tutorials that you can copy and use the reference photos and I also have full length painting tutorial videos for sale on there as well. You can also get instant access to all of my full length painting tutorial videos by subscribing to me on Patreon for just $5 a month and every month you get a new full length painting tutorial video. So I've put the link in the description below. If you'd like to see what artworks I'm working on at the moment then you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook and also my other website samulafineart.com which is just to showcase my paintings and I've put all the links in the description below. Don't forget you can get 50% off your own website by signing up to portfoliobox.net and as I say they're offering 50% off any of their plans for the first year simply by typing in the discount code SAMERP50. So I've put everything in the description box below. Anyway thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, have a beautiful day and I shall see you next time.